Good evening, visitors, and welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Jared Pratt, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Navy is Lieutenant Alexander Mobbs. We welcome the veterans who have served, those who are still serving, and the families that love and support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria, and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony from across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by visitors to the memorial. If able, please stand and join in singing the national anthem. If able, please be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through until the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres. France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends can mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who've given their lives for us in war and on operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Wreaths of floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today, we remember and pay tribute to Corporal Ewan Alexander Cameron. Ewan Alexander Cameron was born in March 1884 in Warring, Victoria, the son of Donald and Janet Cameron. The second of seven children born to the couple, when he was young, his family moved to a nearby town of Mansfield. On finishing school, Cameron became a school teacher in the district. As a young man, he served for seven years in the local light horse unit, where he attained the rank of Lance Corporal. In July 1915, Cameron volunteered to join the Australian Imperial Force. It is possible that he was following the example of his younger brother, John, who had enlisted earlier in the same month. After initial training, the two brothers sailed together from Melbourne in November 1915 on the transport ship Wiltshire. Cameron arrived in Egypt in February 1916 and joined the newly raised 60th Australian Infantry Battalion. With his years of military experience, he was promoted to the rank of corporal in March. At this time, most of the AIF was in the process of sailing to France to join the fighting on the Western Front. The 60th Battalion followed in the middle of June. At this time, British commanders had commenced a large-scale assault along the Somme River. The Australians were to take part in a smaller attack north of these battlefields near the French village of Fromel. The aim of this attack was to keep the German reserve forces in the area to prevent them moving south to reinforce the defenders on the Somme. On the 19th of July 1916, British and Australian forces launched a seven-hour artillery barrage on German positions at Fromel. At six o'clock in the evening, the barrage ended and British and Australian infantry, including the 60th Battalion, attacked the German lines. The defenders were ready, however, and the attackers suffered extremely heavy losses. Cameron's unit was on the right-hand side of the Australian forces, and in this area, the artillery barrage had been particularly ineffective. During the attack, Cameron was struck in the legs by rifle or machine gun fire and badly wounded. He died shortly afterwards. He was 32 years old. The attack at Fromel was a disaster. The 60th Battalion lost more than 90% of its strength in one day. Of about 1,000 men in the battalion prior to the assault, only 65 answered roll call on the 20th of July. Few of the Australians killed at Fromel were identified. Nearly 1,300 Australian soldiers were buried at VC Corner Australian Cemetery and Cameron is presumed to be amongst these. Today, his name appears on the memorial at that site. As a result of the confusion in the aftermath of the battle, Cameron's parents did not hear about his death until January 1917, when they received a letter from the Red Cross suggesting he had been killed. They received official notice of his death in the middle of March 1917. In Australia, Ewan Cameron was survived by his father, mother and siblings. His younger brother John also served in the 60th Battalion. He was wounded at Fromel and recovered in England, later serving as the pay sergeant to the battalion. He returned to Australia in 1919, where he died suddenly the following year. Corporal Ewan Alexander Cameron is listed on the Roll of Honour on my right. Among almost 62,000 Australians who died while serving in the First World War. His photograph is displayed today beside the Pool of Reflection. This is but one of the many stories of service and sacrifice 
told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Corporal, Corporal Ewan Alexander Cameron, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier, or in the low scrub at Gallipoli, with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain, has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. We thank you all for visiting the Australian War Memorial and wish you all a very good evening. Thank you. <laughs>